Bameen with the 2020 Foresight Podcast, where CEOs, presidents, and leaders of small to global companies share their insights. It is six questions in nine minutes because leadership knows how to listen and be concise. So let's get to it. First of all, welcome. And in just a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Thanks, Earl. Uh, I'm Keith Smith, CEO of Vonco Products. Uh, we're a medical device contract manufacturer and a consumer flexible packaging uh, company. So pleasure to, to be here. Uh, not only am I CEO, I would call myself a philanthropist, uh, a public speaker, um, it, an economic developer, uh, someone that sits on uh, multiple boards as well. So just really enjoy uh, entrepreneurship and being around all facets uh, of of that. I've owned Vonco now since uh, 2013, been around since 1955 and acquired it uh, in 2013 and now eight years into it and uh, having a tremendous amount of fun in building, inspiring, creating value for the world. Excellent. We're glad you're here. Now tell me, what's just the best thing about being the CEO of your company? Yeah, the, the best thing for me is to energize uh, and create value. So those are the, my favorite things to do. And uh, the first thing to be able to energize others is to have the energy yourself. And so uh, a big focus of mine is building that entrepreneurial energy. And one of the ways that I do that is, is focusing on what I do best for an organization. So I, I kind of talk about it from my standpoint or the shuns. And so what I love to, to, to work on is the innovation, uh, the acquisitions uh, that uh, Vanco's done, uh, and then working within, I guess it, you call it negotiation. So we create win-win for everybody that uh, partners with, with Vanco. Uh, so those are the things that really fill my energy. And then I am able to energize others by finding there are three to four things that they really create the most value out of. And so one of my favorite parts of that is to see that, uh, uh, surround myself with that within my, my leadership team and then throughout the rest of the organization and uh, creates tremendous amount of value and uh, allows us to run a peaceful, uh, a steady organization where people are in their lanes, uh, create the most value as possible. Well, I hear, and I'm sure you've heard as well from, from other leaders, that leading a team and being able to see what lies ahead can be a challenge. What are your thoughts? Yeah, certainly. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, the, the best thing to do is simplify constantly, is try to find and connect those dots as much as possible in, in a planning process. So, uh, you know, there's certainly those challenges uh, in any organization. And, you know, the minute you get done with a planning process, it's wrong. But what it does is charts a path uh, with a vision uh, out uh, three, five years, and it tells us what to start doing today. And, but it doesn't necessarily say this is all we're going to do or we can't change uh, direction. So we have to be, create nimble organizations that as new uh, information comes in, as uh, pandemics hit, as, uh, as uh, labor shortages exist, as supply chain shortages exist, how do we adapt quickly and create uh, an, an adaptive uh, organization? And, and within that, right, to, to build that adaptiveness within uh, an organization, I go back to having the energy. Right? You have to have the energy to say, I have new inputs, I have to adjust. And so what I look uh, for uh, a lot within, within my team is, are they developing themselves? Are they creating their own energy? And so when they create their own energy, they understand the, the inputs change and uh, have the energy to energize others to do something about it. Very good. Well, what piece out of that, what specific piece of insight do you want to share with and for the benefit of other CEOs, leaders, presidents? Sure. Yeah, you, you, I, you already heard the thread, Earl, uh, throughout the poll yeah. is on the energy. And so you have to, in my uh, humble opinion, is spend time on yourself building that energy. And so I think that comes in really three components, uh, you know, physical energy, uh, emotional uh, energy, as well as spiritual energy. And so from the standpoint of physical, you know, have a good diet, um, you know, you're, if, you, if you're not healthy, you can't 
you can't have energy. So you, you need to eat well. Uh, you, you know, I, I follow certain uh, types of nutrition. I, I put supplements in that help me build energy and create a healthier lifestyle. Uh, I'm active, a uh, runner um, as well as did a triathlon this year. Uh, those, act those activities continue just to, to build uh, energy. But I'd also say rest and recovery, right? We hear a lot of times that CEOs uh, uh, work uh, with reckless uh, abandonment towards no rest and recovery. Yeah, and and yeah. so uh, very consistent in my rest and recovery, not only uh, days off in a workout routine, but also uh, my sleep habits, very consistent seven and a half hours every day. And I wake up charged and uh, go to bed feeling very accomplished. And the emotional side of things, uh, really just shedding low energy types of emotions, fear, shame, guilt, anger, uh, those uh, might be able to drive you. And in fact, in some cases in my, my background, uh, I had that chip, uh, but it's not attractive. So shedding those low energy emotions allows us to be a lot more attractive and versus forcing success. Uh, we, we really believe here that we attract uh, success and we attract the right people and attract the right customers through that uh, philosophy. And then sp spiritual is simply uh, looking at everything that's happened up till now in, in, in gratitude. And so really being grateful for everything that's happened in our organization, in our lives that uh, uh, allowed us to be exactly where we're at right here talking to you is exactly where I want to be. Uh, and so grateful for all those things that have happened along uh, my life and the organization's timeline that uh, got us exactly right, right here. Outstanding. Now, along that pathway, I'm sure you've encountered others who are aspiring and are now successful. So what other successful CEOs like yourself would you like to acknowledge or give a shout out to and should be on my podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. I, uh, I think that, uh, you know, I participate in a Vistage group as well, constantly, again, pouring into myself uh, and how do we, how do I become a better leader, a better CEO? And I've got a great uh, uh, example of that in John Sakaris, who runs Fulton May uh, IT Solutions. And so uh, he's, uh, he said, hey, uh, let her all give me a call. I'm very interested to hear uh, what uh, he's got going on and excited to see my podcast as well. So uh, that's, that's who I would recommend. Excellent. All right. We received that. So now for the final question, how do you celebrate a win? Hmm. Well, it's a, that's a great one. And maybe one of the questions uh, that uh, got me to uh, really be fond of uh, what you're doing here, because we uh, build that right into our core values at the top of it is caring more about um, uh, each other, uh, our customers, as well as uh, the end users, which are patients and consumers. And underneath that, there's a lot of things that, in that, but certainly finding ways to celebrate is a, a big part of who we are. And so uh, there's a running joke where, you know, I try to avoid uh, eating too much of this, but we have cakes a lot. So we, uh, some of the simplest things, it's just a, a simple cake celebration or a meal celebration but all the way up to, you know, taking families and spouses uh, out uh, for uh, big wins. And so uh, COVID put a little bit of a damper in that. And so it's nice to kind of trickle that back. I've seen some cakes now back into our uh, um, day to day activities and uh, lunch is being served. And uh, we, we love to find reasons uh, to celebrate and to I would say that uh, when we get feedback from our associates, that's exactly what they say, that they, they find reasons to celebrate, not to, uh, not to get disappointed, right? Or not be uh, upset about poor results. Let's find, find the little reasons to continue to celebrate. So yeah, great question. And uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, I call myself the CEO and CFO, right? The CFO stands for not chief financial officer, but chief fun officer. So uh, you gotta have, Fun going on as well. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on today. How can people find you? Yeah, so certainly uh, the company, uh, if you're interested in what we do in medical device contract manufacturing or uh, uh, consumer flexible packaging, uh, it's just vonco.com. Uh, but I talked a little bit about uh, some of my uh, public speaking uh, endeavors and just personal uh, uh, activities. If you want to find out more about that, it's keithsmith.io. Outstanding. 
This is Earl Amin with the 2024 Side Podcast. For more insights, go to LinkedIn and search for The Gray Owl Company. Keith, thank you so very much. Appreciate it, Earl.